Victor and Ku'ule Punua of Lihue have performed countless Hawaiian and Polynesian shows in the previous four decades. Victor's magnificent baritone voice and charming personality complemented Ku'ule's fluid hula and radiant smile. The stories of this well-known yet humble musical family are heartwarming. We are so grateful to the Punu Ohana for sharing their memories and their thoughts on perpetuating Hawaiian music. Aloha mokihana Uao kawaii Vilia Me kamai le lau lili Mai le lili e ui We got married in 1953. I called up my girlfriend at, at the girls' school and I told her, oh, uh, Marlene's cousin called me, so uh, she wanted to know if I could take her to the dance. Should I go? She said, oh, yeah. So, <laughs> well, there was a start, so we met, and uh, uh, that was 1951, February 3, 1951. Went to dance, and we've uh, been together since. <laughs> My wife was dancing in Honolulu, you know, for Kent Girard, and uh, they were professionally. And they were dancing at all the, the Waikiki hotels, Queen Surf, and the Moana, and the Royal, and all that. And then she also danced with uh, Io, Auntie Io, at the Donna Beachcombers. And uh, she was still a minor yet. But in 1954, I moved to Kauai. My wife was expecting Victor Jr. then, and he was born in October, and then about November, December, one of the uh, the Yasuda twins, you know, this Yasuda store in Kapa, they asked my wife if she would teach them hula. So she started teaching them. They were her first students. Every time we, they'd ask her to dance, and they said, oh, oh, do you have a musician? She says, yes. And she'd come home and say, uh, are you going to play for me? I said, I'm not. Because <laughs> I, I really, I, I, I couldn't play that good, you know. But anyway, when we went to a function and she's, she goes up, she said, my husband's going to play for me, so I got to come up there. <laughs> Started playing like that, you know. It was really, now it's fun, but then it wasn't fun. <laughs> my grandfather started with the Royal Hawaiian Band about, oh, probably about 1900. And then uh, he retired in 1931, and he was, he was uh, doing a lot of the arrangements. He arranged music, and he wrote music for the churches. He was asked to be uh, the leader, and he directed the uh, Kamakua Maoloa Church in Kalihi and the Kaneohe Congregational Church. And uh, he was asked to uh, help other, other churches, which he did. And he and, he and my grandmother both, Lily. And uh, she would go on the piano and then start playing, and he would write all the notes. And uh, she had a new song. What she'd do is she didn't. She didn't really write the song. She would say, do, do, mi, mi, do, and he would pick it up and write it. So the two of them were really, uh, you know, they, they loved music. She could play any instrument. Uh, the show that we have now, actually, before that, we were doing a lot of, you know, free kind, that community kind, and we're down at the park and whatnot. And she had her students, so they all could dance. And in 1961, uh, Dutchie Kinimaka was the uh, 
he was the entertainment director at Kauai Surf, so he, he, called, he called me one night. He says, Vic, he says, uh, why don't you folks come down and do the show over here? You know, we have one night open. So I told him, oh, okay, I'll talk to my wife. So I told my wife, she said, okay, let's go. I said, no, we, I, I don't want to go. You know, I'm, I'm the negative guy. You know, I said, I, I don't want to go because uh, we don't have musicians. So I, I called Dutchie and said, Dutchie, we don't have musicians. He said, well, that's okay. I got musicians for you. <laughs> you can play with them and Bill Lucidarm and Jimmy, Jimmy Watson, uh, three of us. And so we started like that. So we went one night. He liked it so much. He says, gee, can you guys play more nights? So I said, well, yeah, I guess so. So we started doing two nights, three nights. Pretty soon we were doing six nights. So we were there for 12 and a half years at Kauai Surf. And then from there, went to Club Med for another five years. And then another 12 and a half years at Coconut Beach with Sheraton and Holiday Inn. Well, all our kids were all in the show. So, you know, they, they were ready. How important do you feel that uh, to preserve old Hawaiian music? I, I think it's important that it's, it's nice if you, you know, you could hand it down to the children and all. And it's actually my wife that's really the one that, that, that uh, carries on those traditions and, you know, because of her hula and gets us all involved in that. Yeah. Just like how my father got involved. My mother said we needed a bass player. I didn't know how to play bass. So I turned on the record and just listened and kept playing and playing and playing. Because even at Kamehameha schools, I was primarily, I guess, involved with the, the glee club and the band. So I played instruments. I, like my grandfather, I played the saxophone. Uh, and then I was in the glee club. And uh, I think my interest was more in uh, the directing and conducting rather than, uh, rather than actually being one of the musicians. Well, I'm fortunate because I'm the youngest. <laughs> I've, uh, I have a lot of historians to check my dates against, you know, <laughs> and they do correct me when I'm when I'm a little off. But I think my introduction was uh, uh, being um, called up to the stage to play the cracker cans. You know, the, that was part of the Tahitian ensemble there. Uh, be the cracker cans, and I had my own cracker can that one of the musicians painted. Yeah, <laughs> painted orange for me. Mm. And, uh, you know, that's a big deal. I mean, it's almost like you're a rock star today, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> Mom would always uh, encourage me. She would always tell me, you know, you got to go learn the steel guitar. And, um, you know, brings up another interesting fact. I was more interested in listening to Bob Marley and, you know, <laughs> the rock and roll scene. Mom was persistent. She always told me, no, you got to learn from steel guitar. And, you know, um, <clears throat> there was just a handful of steel guitar players I thought back in the late 70s, 80s. And so today I can see, you know, how a lot of that has passed on. I mean, really just by ear. Here I was about 20 years old. And at that age, <clears throat> really looking back and appreciating the music that they played, you know. So it's not really going forward and being interested in other types of music, but really listening to, the, to what they were playing and, and seeing how, uh, complicated and intricate they played and how much it blended so well together uh, in those old, old recordings of uh, Hawaii Calls and uh, you know Uncle Barney and Jules Asi. Mom and dad really instilled how to you know make it Ohana. I mean my wife dances too and our son uh, you know they, they just if they're around they're gonna do something they're gonna put one malo on and they're gonna play the drums or you know like Wallace he's still carrying it on and uh, so that all of them was good what we can learn is up to us and how far you want to want to take it how do you feel about the preservation of hawaiian music uh well i feel uh it's very important i feel it's important because i think more so because i i know i've been exposed to it i've uh learned how to play you know the steel guitar and uh the different instruments so it's important for me as somebody who knows how to do that to pass it on um, I think as far as the other you know the, the our, our children and the next generation learning it as far as uh, you know having that appreciation for the music I think really is something um, caught yeah rather than taught oh. 
en el guía y en el I actually started drumming back when I was like a little boy. Uh, with my mom's uh, hello and uh, I guess I was, was kind of the designated drummer for the family mm. so over the years to the 70s and I'd be the drummer and like my dad said my mom always had some of the top people come uh, throughout Hawaii and uh, after seeing the masters come down from Tahiti and do their stuff uh, my brother Eddie and I, we just dissected the drumming down to the very basics. And uh, from there, we started training our drummers. I think I got a lot of my mom's jeans. <laughs> so what happens is uh, my wife, uh, she dances the hula. And uh, I'm kind of like my mom where always asking my uh, my wife and my sons to get involved with the show. So my wife dances and she also teaches the hula with a, because uh, she actually learned the ancient hulas and the modern from my mom firsthand. So she, my wife, Shauna, is actually our hula connection to my mom. And uh, amazingly, she's done a fantastic job there. And um, uh, I do the chanting and uh, my sons, are involved as well. Our halal is also very involved with the um, traditional Hawaiian music as well as um, the ancient dances. So we uh, were privileged enough to um, perform at the, and invited to the Merry Monarch. And your opinion about the new music today, the new music that the Hawaiians, are, the young kids are playing? I just had a chat with um, some young uh, upcoming musicians and they're very big in the in the reggae music yeah. <clears throat> uh, my opinion is those young hawaiians and those of our ages and even um, kupunas we really 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 need to encourage and those younger ones need to uh, take it upon themselves to learn the hawaiian music play their hawaiian music first they can always play reggae music, rock and roll, whatever it is, jazz. But um, <clears throat> if our people do not take hold of it and malama the music, it's not going to be around. That's, that's the bottom line. So I encourage the uh, young people to don't be ashamed of the Hawaiian music. Play the Hawaiian music and they will really see that they'll have an effect larger effect on kupunas, children, youth, people of all ages. Oh, 